welcome to Aztecs Now. Uh, still have that glow of victory? Uh, just because you have a bye week, have the glow. Keep the glow. It's good. And this was not a bad, this was a good New Mexico State team that played that uh, Aztec team close. Not off their feet, but close in the fourth quarter. I mean, that is anybody's ball game. And I'll tell you what, in some years past, in those games where it was anybody's ball game, the Aztecs did not win those games, or as many of them as they would have liked to, but they did that and, uh, and won this ball game against the Aggies. So now they come up with a much larger game and a much more difficult opp uh, opportunity, if that's the word, against Brigham Young. University, which ran all over UNLV last Saturday, and they are, if they're not the best, they're close to the best, and yeah, they probably are based on Utah right now and other teams in this conference. They are the best. These are the Aztecs against that New Mexico State team early on here uh, with Aaron uh, Jeff Fleming, their quarterback, and Daywan Hemmings has his uh, first interception right there, first in his career. He had an incredibly large game, number five did, and uh, come back out here with uh, the defense. Stripped out. Nice play by Preston to get it up in the air. Daywan Hemmings gets the bounce, goes in for the touchdown. It was a large day for him. Even um, Russell Allen had, like, what, 23 tackles against Utah a while back. Uh, but this one was more of, a, of an impact game that uh, day one had. Then in the third quarter, the Brown-to-Brown -Brown combination, Devon Brown to Vincent Brown. That worked. Let's do that again. That was really well done for the touchdown. The Aztecs go up 17-7, and that will take you on to the uh, fourth quarter. At the uh, five-yard line, Ryan Lindley. This is a great, this is a great combo work right after you here. Willie Waters, a former linebacker, now a fullback, with uh, Matthew Kowalik not able to play with that bad shoulder injury, and more on him later with Coach Hoke in terms of Kowalik. They uh, combined there to go 24-17. Then Lane Yoshida had a field goal. And Walter Casey, hey, a running back is born. I, I wouldn't say a star is born because uh, Coach Hoke will make that determination, not me. But a running back was born with a 100-yard game, and the Aztec running game looked extremely good, the best it has. And I thought the defense, after the way they played at Air Force, carried it on and played another terrific game against these New Mexico State Aggies. So, we welcome the head coach of the San Diego State Aztecs, Brady Hoke, about this uh, off week. And I was, I remember there was somebody, I forget, in the media asked you if you were going and taking time off and going to Hawaii or something. And I'm saying, have they met Brady? He ain't taking no time off. He's not going to Hawaii. He's not going anywhere. No time off. Well, there's no time out, you know. <laughs> and uh, one thing about off weeks, I think it gives you a chance uh, to really focus on what you're doing on both sides of the ball and, and really study it and look at it and see if uh, uh, you're going in the right direction. I think we wanted to give our players some time off so that they could uh, uh, mentally, as much as anything, uh, relax a little bit. But at the same time, we practiced three days and uh, had good intensity and good speed. You know, the one thing you want the timing to continue offensively and defensively. So that's a big part of it. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you because it really is it's a fine line where you want to work guys, but you don't want to work them to death. Right. And you got some time off, you want to reward them for that, especially after a win. And how do you know, I guess experience, because you've done this, how do you know when, when too little is too little and too much is too much? Well, you're exactly right, Ted. You know, the experience of uh, doing it a couple different ways, and this really uh, has always been the, the, the tried and true method for us uh, as a program of practicing really hard for three days, maybe not as long, but getting three day good days of work in and, and getting two days in the weight room and doing a little conditioning on another day, but uh, trying to give our players mentally a little bit of a, uh, a break of, uh, you know, the intensity when it comes to really preparing for an opponent. And, and and we mentioned I mentioned this defense before. We showed Daywan Hemmings, and he'll join us later. Also, in terms of, of, the, of the coaches always say you practice – and you play how you practice, and also in terms of the, the, the carryover from the Air Force game, Coach, I thought it was there when you right. pitch in essence, a shutout. They didn't score a touchdown on your defense, and I thought that carried over to New Mexico State. Well, you know, I thought defensively, I think our guys kept us in the football game. I thought up front, Ernie Lawson really played a nice game and hit the quarterback some, stripped mm -hmm. the ball away uh, on the fumble recovery that Dewan scooped up and scored with, and, and I thought the guys up front uh, played with a physical presence, and that was big for I thought in the back end uh, we had a couple things that we broke down at, but I thought for the most part, you know, we were filling where we needed to fill. I think we were a little tighter in coverage, and we still got to work a little more at that. But I, I thought overall the defense kept us in the football game, and in the fourth quarter our offense got uh, going with the run game and mm -hmm. really finished the game out well. And they always talk about uh, somebody on the defense got to stop. <laughs> I hate those cliches, but they're true. You got to step up, got to make a play. And Daywan did that. Well, he did. He, you know, on the interception that he, he had, it was a, a good break off of the hash playing cover two. And at the same time, it was a really good uh, hit on the quarterback late by uh, uh, 
uh, B.J. Williams. So mm -hmm. those things were all positives, and, and it's a team game, and that's what it proves. We talked about that, uh, and, and you are a guy, uh, old school or not, that wants to run the football, right. and you've had to do that without Atia Henderson. Whether he was going to be the best or not, that's up to you, not me, but a bad uh, a broken bone in the back, there's no way. Then you lose Brandon Sullivan after his 100-yard game, but Walter Casey, I thought, stepped up and some spin moves and really looked good. Well, you know, Walter's going to be a uh, really good football player, we think, for us. You know, he's, he's a young guy. Him and Anthony both are two young guys that... Uh, we're kind of counting on, and Walter's got pretty good shiftiness. He's got a nice burst, and I think one of the things that Walter does as well as anything, he, he's a tough runner with the football. He wants to be physical. He wants to run through you if he can, and, and I think he shows this just on that run there. That was a physical run at the goal line, and, and you've got to give some credit, Ted. You know, the offensive line uh, really came together a little bit. Nick Imbernati, we, we started in there at the right, right. guard, a true freshman, and, and I thought Nick played a good football game. Were you satisfied? Maybe this is a stupid question because you're not until you win a bunch of games, but the offensive line, is that still a work in progress? The personnel that we saw, sure. including him, is that going to be in flux? Is that going to change for BYU or not? Well, it should stay the same right now, but mm -hmm. I, I think, you know, and you said it, you know, you're never satisfied. If, if you get satisfied, then you're going to go backwards. So we've got, to, there's a lot of things we've got to do better uh, when you look at how we combination block and how we move the line of scrimmage and finish blocks. But, you know, I I thought this was our best game to this point. Uh, we need a, a, a better game this week. Definitely this uh, BYU team. Whew, we will come back and talk about these Cougars. They ran up and down the field in Las Vegas. It was not a contest whatsoever. They have beaten Oklahoma, for heaven's sakes. They played Florida State. That's their only loss. We'll come back and talk with Coach Hoke about BYU and this Saturday at 3 o'clock at Qualcomm Stadium in a moment.